dear students today we will be discussing about low temperature solar power generation system the key discussions for today's lecture includes the basic components of low temperature solar power plant working of a low temperature solar power plant and finally performance evaluation of a solar power plant which is in low temperature cycle. So, this figure shows the processes by which we can produce electricity. First, what we need to do? We need to have a collector system. Here, solar radiation falls on the collector and then water inside the collector is heated up. That means, the solar energy is converted to thermal energy and then that has to be stored in an insulated vessel and then this can be transferred to boiler where change of phase will occur. That means, from liquid to steam and that thermal energy will be used in heat engine that will produce mechanical energy and then if we connect to a generator then we can have electricity. Of course, we can have some form of heat which can be further utilized here and here. So, this is the basic process by which we can generate electricity by using solar technologies. Now, let us see how a flat plate collector can be utilized for generation of electricity. Here you can see this is a flat plate collectors and this is used to collect solar energy with water flowing through it. Right? So, water flows through the tubes which is attached to the absorber plate of the flat plate collector and then this heated fluid will come through the pipeline and stored in a insulated tank. Normally, this temperature, this outlet temperature of this flat plate collector is say about 60 to 70 degree C, but when we use booster mirror then its temperature goes something like 110 degree C. Okay? An ambient we can consider may be at 25 degree C, the inlet temperature of the fluid. And it might show up in that we can store the hot water at 100 degree C in an insulated tank. Okay? Before we expand in the secondary fluid, because here what we are using a organic Rankine cycle. Okay? So, typically what are the refrigerant used like R11, R113, R114. So, either of the refrigerant we can use in this secondary cycle. So, here what happens? What are different components of a secondary cycle? We must have a expander or turbine, then condenser then we have feed pump and then this heat exchanger. Okay? So, hot fluid interact with this hot water interact with this organic fluid having low boiling point then it will evaporate right? and then this will be expanded in a turbine and it can produce mechanical energy. So, if we connect a generator then we can have electrical energy. right? and exit of the turbine need to be cooled in a condenser in a condenser right and then finally this will be recirculated in a closed loop right here also after this temperature goes down then this water can be recirculated again and again in a closed loop right normally the collector efficiency is about 25% and as you can see the temperature difference 
between the entry of the turbine and then this temperature is 35. So, temperature difference is about 55. And if we consider this temperature difference and then we try to calculate the Rankine cycle efficiency, then it is found to be about 7 to 8 percent. And if we combine all those efficiencies, finally, then overall efficiency is found to be about 2 percent. So, this is not so efficient process, but when there is a prime requirement of electricity and solar radiation is available, then under those circumstances, we can suggest this kind of technology. Right? So, now let us solve one problem in order to strengthen the understanding of a Rankine cycle working for low temperature power plant. So, this is the TS diagram of a organic Rankine cycle, this is the vapor dome and then process 1 to 2, 1 to 2 here is the isentropic expansion, isentropic expansion in turbine, then process 2 to 3 is the constant pressure, heat rejection, In a condenser, then three to four will have isentropic compression in a pump, and then four to one is the constant pressure, constant pressure heat addition. Okay. So, this is the vapor dome and TS diagram of a Rankine cycle. So, in that example, what is given? This ORC condition at 1 and 2 is given like pressure P 1 and P 2, P 1 is 1.4 mega Pascal and P 2 is 0.7 mega Pascal and this ORC is employed in a low temperature solar power plant to produce power and in this case refrigerant 134A is applied as working fluid. We need to determine the flow rate of the refrigerant and the efficiency of the plant if the required power is 50 kilowatt. So, this is the problem. Here conditions given are refrigerant is given and pressure here at 1.4 and then this condition is given and also the properties at those conditions are given to us. So, here at condition 1, temperature is 52.4 degrees Celsius and T 2, since T 2 and T 3 are constant, so its value is 26.69 degrees Celsius, this is given to us. And at pressure P 1, which is equal to P 4 is 1.4 mega Pascal. So, at this pressure we can have the thermodynamic values for this refrigerant H 1 is 276.1 kilo joule, kilo joule per kg and entropy is 0 0.9105 kilo joule per kg Kelvin and at pressure 0.7 mega Pascal HF is found to be 88.82 kilojoule per kg. So, this 
So, these all values are you know taken from the refrigerant table and H F Z is equal to 176.26 kilo joule per kg and entropy S F is equal to 0.33232 kilo joule per kg Kelvin. Okay? And again S F Z is also found which is equal to 0 0.5878 kilo joule per kg Kelvin. Okay? Now, let us take the process 1 to 2, process 1 to 2, it is an isentropic process, right? That means, entropy at 1 is equal to entropy at state 2, right? So, if this is the case, then what we can do as 2 is equal to S f plus x into S f z expression can be used because we need to know the dryness fraction at this point and once we know dryness fraction then we can calculate what is the enthalpy right. So, these values are known to us now S 2 is 0 0.9105. So, this would be S 2. Uh, this is this S 1 and S 2 are same. So, that is why S 1 S 2 is same S 2 this is S f is 0 0.33232 plus x multiplied by S f z is how much is 0 0.5878 0 0.5878. Okay? So, from here we can find out what is x. So, it is found to be 0 0.9836. Okay? So, this is very close to 1. right? So, once we know this, then what we can find out is the enthalpy because enthalpy at 2 is equal to H f plus x into H f z. Right. So, here H f is what? It is from the table 88.82 plus dryness fraction already calculated 9836 and H f z is 176.276.26 kilo joule per kg. So, this is calculated to be 262 point two four kilo joule per kg. So, H 2 is known now. So, once we know H 2 and H 1, then what we can calculate is turbine work output, right. So, turbine work output which is represented by W t is nothing but mass flow rate multiplied by H 1 minus H 2. So, if we substitute the values of H 1 and H 2 and this value is given as 50. Okay? So, mass flow rate we can calculate this is 276.1 minus 262.24. Okay? So, this mass flow rate is equal to 3.597 kg per second. Right? So, this 50 kilowatt power we need to produce. Right? So, now if we neglect the pump work that means 3 to 4 work that means is neglected then H 4 is equal to H 3 
is equal to 88.82 kilojoule per kg. Right? So, now what we need to calculate is the heat supplied to the system. This heat supplied to the system will be Q is equal to mass flow rate H1 minus H4, right. So, mass flow rate already we have calculated it is 3.597 and H1 is 276.1 minus H4 is 88.82, right. So, this is found to be 672.7 kilowatt. Okay. So, now we know Q then how we can calculate efficiency? Efficiency is defined as eta W T by heat supplied or Q, Q actual or heat supplied. So, this is something like 50 divided by 672.7. Okay. So, this is calculated to be 7.43 percentage. Right. So, we have calculated the mass flow rate which is 3.597 kg per second and efficiency of the plant is 7.43 percentage. Right? So, what problem I have chosen here to make you understand how this kind of calculations can be carried out for estimating performance of a low temperature solar power plant. Now, we can have one more configurations to produce power. Like here, what you can see, we have different components in this plant, like we can have a feed pump, then solar modules, then we have turbine and then condenser. Right? The TS diagram is seen here, so it is a vapor dome and then 1, 2 is isentropic compression in the pump, then 2 to 3 is the constant pressure heat addition, then 3 to 4 is the isentropic expansion and then we will have 4 to 1 is the constant pressure heat rejection in the condenser. Right? So, here what happens this working fluid is R245 FA is pumped to high pressure. So, here this pressure is high here with the help of this feed pump. Then this solar collector will act as an evaporator where this high pressure liquid is heated and undergoes phase change. Right? So, here liquid form it will enter and then it will come in the gaseous form. Also, the superheating of vapor at stage 3 is very, very necessary to avoid wet stroke and ensure efficient operation of the turbine. And this superheated fluid will expand in the expander or turbine and then exit will cool down in the condenser. And then once it is cooled, it becomes liquid and then it will pump again through this feed pump and then cycle will be repeated. Right? So, this is an another way of generating electricity. So, once we generate the soft work by expanding the fluid in the expander, then that can be applied for generation of electricity, maybe for solar pumping or maybe for reverse osmosis desalination and we can use many more cases. So, this is one way of harvesting solar energy for electricity generation. 
and this fall under low temperature category. Now, let us learn about solar chimney power plant. So, this concept was introduced in 1970s and it was named as solar updraft tower power plant. So, it consists of a tall chimney, this is the chimney, a circular greenhouse with transparent cover. So, this field is circular and these are transparent covers and we need to have a metal frame to hold this greenhouse and you can see here a fan is rotating and generator is coupled just below the fan to generate electricity. So, it what happens here the sunlight passes through this transparent cover causes the air trapped in the greenhouse. Because why it is greenhouse? Because see short wave radiation comes through this transparent sheet and then what happens? When it strikes the ground then it becomes long wave radiation and this long wave radiation is opaque, but it is not allowed to pass through. So, it is something like greenhouse effect. So, that is how heating is done here just bend it to this transparent cover. So, the temperature difference up to 20 degree is achieved and because of this density difference there will be convective current and this will move upward and while moving upward this fan starts rotating and once this fan rotates since it is coupled with a generator then it will start generating electricity. right? So, this is how this system works, but the energy conversion efficiency of this technology is very low and the maximum conversion efficiency can be calculated by using this expression. It is function of the height of the chimney and the ambient temperature. right? So, Z is the acceleration due to gravity multiplied by height of the chimney divided by C p this is the specific heat of air multiplied by T a is the temperature of the ambient air. Okay. So, we can give an example where this kind of plant is located. This is the specification of the plant which is installed in the Spain, Manzanares. There, chimney height is about 195 meter and diameter of the chimney is 10.3 meter and the solar collector area extended to a radius of 122 meter with glazing being 1.85 meter above the ground. Okay. So, that is the clearance from the ground to the transparent sheet and total area of the glazing is 46,000 meter square and in that case four numbers of turbines were installed having 5 meter long blades and it rotates at a speed of 1500 rpm to produce a peak power output of 50 kilowatt. So, let us take an example so that you can feel like how we can design this kind of solar chimney power plant. Here you just see the chimney, this is the height of the chimney is 300 meter and area this is the circular area is 50,000 meter square and ambient temperature is 305 Kelvin and specific heat of air is given as 1005 Joule kg Kelvin. We need to calculate the maximum possible conversion efficiency with this solar chimney and also we need to estimate the efficiency of the plant as a whole and the daily electrical output in a typical summer month under the assumptions of number 1 turbine generator converts only 50 percent out of the maximum available energy into the electrical energy. Number 2 collection efficiency of the greenhouse is 25 percent and for summer month the radiation received is 6.5 kilowatt hour per meter square. 
right. So, with this information we need to now solve this problem like we know the expression of maximum possible conversion efficiency that means we can write eta max which is nothing but z multiplied by h divided by c p into t a. So, we can substitute the values z is 9.81 and h is 300 meter and c p is 1005 and t a is 305 this should be in Kelvin and if we multiply with 100 then we will get in percentage. So, this will be something like 0 0.96 percentage. So, it is very very less efficient process right. Now, again if we are interested about overall efficiency overall efficiency will be something like we will have efficiency of greenhouse greenhouse multiplied by we will have eta max multiplied by we will have eta turbine generator ok. So, if we substitute those values so this is 0 0.25 then 0 0.96 divided by 100 multiplied by we will have 0 0.5. So, this will be something like 0 0.0012. So, if we convert to percentage multiplied by 100 then it will be about 0 0.12 percentage right. Also, we have been asked to calculate the daily electrical output. So, daily electrical output output of the plant plant is something like what is the radiation it is 6.5 kilowatt hour per meter square. 6.5 multiplied by we will have area what is the area area is 50,000 right it is 50,000 then we need the overall efficiency right 0 0.0012 right. So, if you do the calculation it is come out to be 390 kilowatt hour ok. So, this is 6.5 is the radiation received and 50,000 is the area ok this i into this much multiplied by this efficiency. So, that will give like electrical output. So, this is something like you can visualize. So, efficiency this overall efficiency is something like we will have output p output we can make in terms of some equations. So, this is i into a. So, if we use this expression then we can find out what is the daily electrical output of the plant. So, I can give you one more example like this kind of plant is exist in Australia. So, it is about 200 megawatt electrical and it is height is about uh, 1 kilometer and an area covered is about uh, 7 kilometer ok and this plant is located in Australia ok. So, people have already demonstrated it is working and uh, started building as per the requirement of a particular location, but its efficiency is really very very low. But when there is a real demand then of course, we, we need to go for this kind of technologies. So, uh, we can summarize what we have learned today basically 
we have learned different components of a low temperature solar power plant and it is working. Also, we have done numerical problems to understand how a low temperature solar power plant is designed. So, thank you very much for watching this video. Thank you. Thank you.